in progress. Good afternoon, everybody. All right, um, before we start, are there any questions about anything? Uh, today we're gonna be doing <clears throat> uh, balancing redox equations. Let me get this set up. And it's a pretty involved process, but we can handle it. I got faith in you, I believe you can do it. <laughs> um, we talked about already uh oxidation numbers and how to calculate them and how to determine if something got reduced or oxidized and so now we're going to take that what we know and apply it to uh, another example so we're going to talk about balancing redox reactions and let me find that all right and now because i was prepping last well not really last. i've been prepping for this for the past couple of days to be honest with you because such a such a heavy uh Heavy topic. So we're going to do today's the 30th. Wow. We're going to start out with this topic of balancing redox reaction. <clears throat> Share my screen right quick. So when we think about <clears throat> balancing redox reactions, it's all contextual. So the reaction is gonna take place in a specific type of medium and that's gonna determine like the number of steps it takes to balance it. So normally there are eight steps to balancing a uh, redox reaction. We're gonna, I'm not gonna write them out or list them. We're just gonna go through them and we'll discuss them. As Right, so these are going to either going to be in acidic medium, and that does matter. <clears throat> so in acidic media, that's seven steps. In basic media, it takes eight steps to balance the. Um, <laughs> balance a redox equation or redox reaction. So let's just jump in. All right. And I'm working on, a, I'm, I'm up 95% finished with this redox video. That'll help. Hopefully I, it'll help you to remember the steps and to remember like what to do when you encounter a redox equation. It's not about well, whether you are uh, able to do it. It's just knowing when you see it, how to approach it because everything is all about approach. It's all about how you attack something. So with redox equations, you gotta recognize first that it is a redox reaction. And then also at, uh, at the same time, you gotta recognize like what the approach is or remember, recall what the approach is to attack it. So we're gonna take this redox uh, reaction right here. It's gonna be uh, dichromate CR207 minus two. And that's going to be plus Fe2 plus. And that's going to give us Cr3 plus plus Fe3 plus. All right, so that's, that's our redox equation. And we're going to assume that it's done because most of the time, <laughs> when you do a problem like this, they'll tell you if it's done in acidic or basic media. So we're going to assume that this is being done in acidic media. And that matters, right? Because that means that the eighth step either is necessary or not, depending on what the media is that you're running the reaction in. All right. So let's jump in. The first thing you have to do in a reaction like this is 
write what's called half reactions. So that's the first thing that we're going to do. And I'll, I'm, I'm going to explain that. So we're going to write half reactions. So we're going to take like species and combine them. So the chromiums we're going to put together. And then the iron we're going to put together. So two separate half reactions <clears throat> are going to make up this redox reaction. All right, so we're going to take this Cr2O7 and make that give us Cr3+. Don't worry about balancing. All that's part of the process. And then we're going to take the iron, Fe2+, plus, and make that give us Fe3+. Plus. All right. And you can already kind of identify which side is getting oxidized and which side is going to be reduced. If you look at the iron, what happened to iron? I'm just throwing this in here uh, just to see where your head is. What happened to iron? Did it become, did the charge become higher or lower? It became lower, right? You had an electron. Well, it went, it went up. It went from two. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, so, so the charge actually went up from two to three. So you can see that that step right there <clears throat> is the oxidation step. So by default, the other step is going to be the reduction step. And we're going to see that later, but I just want to put it out there. So we write our half reactions. That's the first thing, right? And the second part of this process So we're going to balance our atoms, but not hydrogen or oxygen. All right. So we're going to balance everything except <clears throat> hydrogen and oxygen. And there's a reason for that. All of those are steps in the process. <laughs> so we're going to take, um, if we look at these equations, are the irons okay? Are they balanced? Right, so you look at the irons, there's one iron on each side, so that's balanced. But what about chromium? Is chromium balanced? No. What would you do to balance it? Put a, a two behind it on the right side. So put a two, well, we all, always put the coefficient in front. So we're gonna put a-, a Oh, yeah, yeah, in front. I got you. We're gonna put the co a coefficient of two Right there. Is that what you is that what you mean? Yes, sir. Well, that looks like a Z. Let me fix it. So put a coefficient of two right here. All right. This is good. So all so our atoms are balanced, but not everything. So the, there's a third step in the process. And in that third step, we have to balance oxygen. Let me just add a page. <clears throat> so step one, write the half reaction. So put, put the like species together. Let me put a note over here. Right, step two, we're gonna balance atoms other than hydrogen and oxygen in step two. And then in the third step, we're gonna balance oxygen. And to balance oxygen, we're gonna use water, <laughs> excuse me, which is good because if, if I use water, I have an odd number of oxygens. So I can balance anything with that. If I need two oxygens, I can add two waters. If I need 10 oxygens, I can add 10. If I need five, I can add five. Because in that water molecule, there's only a single oxygen. So let's see what we need to do. So we got Cr2O7. I'm going to rewrite it. Oh, and let me go back and put the charge in. My apologies. Never want to leave out that kind of stuff because that's a serious detail right there that, that'll come back to bite us in the end. 
<clears throat> if we screw that part up. So this is CR207 minus two going to two CR3 plus. And on the bottom, it is FE2 plus going to FE3 plus. All right, here we go. How many oxygens are present in the, in the whole thing? How many do you see? Is it just a seven or are we, we're not counting H2O, right? Well, we don't have H2O yet. That's just, okay. let, me, let me move that. This That's here. That's how we're gonna balance oxygen though. Okay. So when we balance, uh, when we balance an equation, what are we trying to do? Make the coefficients equal on both sides. Make everything equal on both sides. So we got seven oxygens on the left. We're gonna add water on the right until we reach seven oxygens, all right? So how many waters do I need? If every water contains one oxygen, how many would I need on the other side? Seven. Seven. So I'm gonna put seven H2O here. Everybody following that? Anybody not following? <clears throat> So in order to balance out oxygen, <laughs> which is the third, third, excuse me, I just ate, so I'm kind of tripping. But that's the third um, step in the process. And if I want to balance oxygen, wherever oxygen is, I add water to the other side. If oxygen was on the right, I add water to the left. If oxygen was on the left, I add it to the right, like we did here. All right. So we're going to add, we, we add the number of waters necessary to bring oxygen to the same number on both sides. Is that okay? Everybody okay with that? There's no oxygen in the second half equation, so we don't care about it. We're not doing anything with that. All right, any questions? All right, <clears throat> so now let's take, um, Let's take the, let's go to the fourth step in the process. So the fourth step, we balance oxygen. Of course, now we want to balance hydrogen because by adding water, we've introduced hydrogen. So we need to balance that too, right? And again, the goal is to balance, <coughs> excuse me, the redox equation. So we're going to do that. So we're going to take this. We're going to balance hydrogen. with H plus, right? So wherever the hydrogen is, you're gonna add H plus to the opposite side. So here in the chromium half, well, the dichromate half reaction, that's what this is, by the way. So in the dichromate half reaction at the top, right? There's seven waters on the other side, on the product side. So how many hydrogens are on the product side? <clears throat> you said oxygen, right? No, hydrogen. We, we hydrogen, don't have uh, 14. 14 hydrogens, good. So the iron doesn't change. This is gonna be Fe2 plus going to Fe3 plus. But, the, but with the dichromate, since I have seven waters on this side, I need to add seven protons on the other side. So I, I balanced, uh, I, I wanna balance the waters with protons. So this is a proton, H plus. So I'm gonna put 14 H plus, opposite to where, my, where that water is. plus CR207 minus two, and that yields two CR3 plus, plus seven H2O. All right, so now we got the same number of oxygens on both sides, same number of hydrogens on both sides, and the same number of atoms on both sides. Everything is equal. And with the iron, we haven't, we don't need to do anything to that because it's already balanced. All right. Any questions so far? So we've we've done 
<clears throat> we've written a half reactions. Uh, we have balanced the atoms, we balanced oxygen with water, we balanced uh, hydrogens with protons. And now we need to balance the charges. All right, and there are two ways to think about this. And I'm going to <clears throat> give you the easy way first, and then the more rigorous way we'll do second. So now we want to do this. We want to keep running out of room. All right, so what we want to do now is take that equation and now we want to balance the charges. We want to put total here in parentheses and quotes. If I could spell it. So we're going to balance the total charge by adding electrons. Either both sides can uh, are susceptible to getting electrons, right? So we can add them to the left side or to the right side. But normally, when I add electrons to the left, that's the side that's being reduced. When I add them to the right, <clears throat> that's the side that's being oxidized. So let's do it. So let me, uh, I'm going to rewrite it. 14 H plus plus CR two O seven minus two. All right. <clears throat> I'm gonna leave a little space in case I'm adding those or electrons to that side. And that is um two CR three plus plus seven waters. And then over here, <clears throat> it is Fe two plus going to Fe three plus. Now the, the short way to do this, to figure out how many electrons you wanna add and where they're gonna, which side they're gonna go on <clears throat> is to, Take the total charge for each side. So the total charge on this side, I'm, I'm going to start with the chromium. Well, the dichromate, sorry. I'm going to start here. Total charge is going to be so it's plus 14 for the protons, right? Every one of those is plus one, and you have 14 of them. <clears throat> and you have one dichromate that has a minus two charge. <clears throat> All right, so with that being said, the total charge is going to be what? Is it plus 12? Is that right? 14 minus two is 12, yes? Yes, sir. All right. On the other side, I have two times three plus, right, for chromium, and then the water is zero. But anytime you have a, a molecule like that and there's no charge, that means it's neutral, right? So the water is zero, so this is gonna be what? Plus six, and this is total charge for the, for the other side, so that's plus six. Any questions about that? So we got a plus 12 on this side and a plus six on this side. Right now, I can't take plus six and make it plus 12, but I can take plus 12 and make it plus six. So if I wanted to make plus six more positive, I would have to take away protons, but I'm not gonna do that, right? You know, I'll take away protons. But the only thing that you add or remove are electrons. So if the total charge in that top reaction on the right is plus six, and I want the total charge on the left to be plus six, how many electrons with a negative one charge do I need to add? Each electron has a negative one charge. Is that right? 
Yes, sir. And I wanted, if I wanted to take 12 down to six, what, what would I do? Put six electrons. Add six electrons. So, I'm, so the way I'm going to balance this top equation is I'm going to put six electrons right here. Right, and I'll, you'll see this written as 6E with a minus charge because all electrons have a negative one charge. So it's going to be plus 6E. All right, and that will reduce the charge on the left side to plus six, right? And the other side is plus six, so now the charges are balanced there, right? On the bottom part, what's the total charge on this side? The bottom half reaction. It's plus two for iron, and then on this side, plus three. Now again, I can't take uh, plus two up to plus three because that will mean I will have to remove a proton. But I can take plus three down to plus two. How many electrons would it take for me to do that? Just one. Just one. Good. So I'm going to add one electron on this side. All right, so now that's the, that's the fifth step. It's a little bit more complicated, <clears throat> but if you know the total charge for each side and you can figure out how many electrons to either add to the reductant side or to the oxidation side, all right? So this is, this is another place where we can add some nuance, right? So on the, on the left side, this is where if I'm reducing, if, if, if something is being reduced, the uh, electrons are gonna be added here. This is the reduction side. So if, I'm, if, if any, any one of those species is being reduced, the electrons are gonna be added to that side and on the left side. So the left side is, is gonna show where the reduction happens. And then on the other side, if you notice right here, there are electrons on this side, on the right side of the arrow, the product side. This is the oxidation side. So reduction, you illustrate by adding electrons to the left side. Oxidation, you illustrate by adding electrons to the right side. All right. So now, your total charge is gonna be different for both, right? <clears throat> so the total charge was plus 12. When I added in the six electrons, that charge is gonna to go to plus six, just like the other side. On this side, the new total is gonna to be plus two. And then let me see if I can, fit that in here. So new total is plus six for the reactant side of the dichromate half reaction. And in the other half reaction, the new total is plus two. Just so, so now both sides have the same charge in both, <coughs> both half reactions. All right. Qu any questions? Now, there's another way to check this because sometimes it may not be evident uh, what's being oxidized and what's being reduced. So let's say for the sake of this question that we want to know about chromium. You can also check the oxidation numbers. Right, so we're gonna let's try let's solve for the oxidation number for uh, dichromate. So Cr two O seven minus two. We did this the other day. What do we? What can we set the whole thing equal to to solve for chromium? We, if we know oxygen is in this case has an oxidation number of minus two, 
right? We're gonna set that whole thing equal to minus two. So it's gonna be seven for oxygen times negative two plus two X. Is that right? This is oxygen and this is chromium. So we can, we can solve for the oxidation number of chromium on both sides to see if we got oxidized or if we got reduced. All right, so this is negative two, negative 14 plus two X. <coughs> Excuse me. If we solving for two X or solving for X, we're gonna add 14 to both sides. That's gonna be plus 12 equals two X. And then X will be six. All right, so that's for the chromium and dichromate. And then if you look on the other side, it's just two Cr3 plus. So that's gonna be, uh, so for Cr3 plus, we don't have to solve for that oxidation number because it's given any ion, whatever the charge is, that's what the oxidation number is. So we got two Cr3 pluses. So that's gonna be a total of six plus. And when we compare the two here, which was 12 and the six over here, we know that we added, we reduced chromium. Right, so we can check it that way too. And, and <clears throat> I recommend doing the, the short way when you're working through a problem like this, but if you ever get confused about what got reduced, what got oxidized, you can always go back and check the oxidation number, right? So the first method, we just did the total charge, added up all the charges. And the second method, we checked the oxidation number. Let's see. Questions, any questions? We're almost, almost home. We got um, two more steps. All right, almost home, almost home, almost home. And all oh, the six got cut off. All right, so now we know the chromium or well, the dichromate is the reduction half and the, uh, the iron is the oxidation half. Now, <clears throat> in the sixth step, what do you think we're gonna do here? Just take a guess. You don't have, there's no, well, there is a right answer, but I'm not looking. I just want to see if you're following the flow of the, the progression. So we started out with the full equation. We chopped it in half. We balanced the atoms. We balanced oxygen. We balanced hydrogen. We balanced the charge. Now what, by adding electrons, now what do you think we're going to do? Just take a guess. We're gonna balance the electrons now. So up here we had <clears throat> 14 H plus plus CR207 minus two plus six electrons. And the reason we wanna balance the electrons is we're gonna cancel them. That's why you show them, that's why they can't. Oh, thank you, I see it, Mary, yes. That's why <clears throat> you don't put the electrons on the same side. It, you're either gonna have electrons on the, on the reactant side or the product side, but they're not gonna both be on the reactant side or both be on the product side because there's a step coming where we're gonna cancel them, we're gonna get rid of them. But before we can cancel them, we gotta make them equal. So that's that. 
and that's going to uh, two CR three plus plus seven H two O. Is that right? Yep, yeah, that's right. All right, and then in the other half reaction, it is Fe three plus. Is it? No, it's two plus. Fe two plus going to Fe three plus plus one electron. All right. <clears throat> What do we need to do to balance the electrons? That's here and here. We're gonna have to do something with those coefficients. Anybody wanna chime in on that? So I, I have to ask, right? Go ahead. You, so we're, you said we're trying to make it like even with the mm -hmm. coefficients, correct? Mm -hmm. Let me let, and let me do this. Too. And, I don't want to make you, this confusing. Let me move this over. Because those electrons in the iron reaction are on the right side and the ones in the chromium, chromate, dichromate reaction are on the left side. Go ahead. Okay, so... Are we are we doing the charges form too to make sure the charge is even on both sides? That's that's what I wanted to ask. Well, the charges <laughs> have already been balanced with the electrons. So now we can we want to make sure that the number of electrons on both sides are equal. But when in doing that, it's also going to affect the charges in at least one of the reactions because we got to do something to change the coefficient right in front of the electrons. So how many electrons do I have on the left side? I, I like the way you think thinking, by the way. You're talking about like the 6E, right? Yeah, so we got six okay. electrons on the left. Yeah. How many on the right? We aren't seeing any on the right side, right? Or, oh, it's one? One. Oh, one. so the iron is on the right side of the equation, not the, okay, all right. Yeah, so, so hold up, let, let me make sure we, we clear. We got a reaction arrow here and one here. So you got an iron on this side going and, and it's getting converted into another iron species on the other side. And then by the same token, all, all of this up here is happening to give you this over here, all right? So we're looking at both equations? Yes. Okay, all right, yeah. I'm sorry. That, that's where I was kind of a little lost at because I wasn't sure if it was like, we were kind of looking at like the left side of the first one and the right side of the second is like yeah, one. Yeah, no, it's the whole thing. So what what would you do to get six electrons in both reactions? We got six at the in the top reaction. What do we need to do to the bottom to get six electrons? Would we have to put like a subscript six for the one electron since it's already got one right there? Or so electrons are not atoms, so we can't put subscripts, but we can multiply the whole thing by six and make increase everything by six. So what we're going to do is take a six and we're going to distribute it through this whole equation. So we're going to multiply everything by six. So that's going to give me six Fe two plus going to six F E three plus plus six electrons. All right, everything gets gets multiplied by six in order to um, balance the number of electrons on both sides. So now you got six electrons on the right side of the arrow and six electrons on the left side here at the top. And the reason I'm saying that like that is because the next in the next step we're going to combine everything everything on the left is going to get combined and everything on the right is going to get combined so now our electrons are balanced our atoms are balanced our charges are balanced so now the final step here is to combine the half equations or half reactions
and we're going to cancel out anything that's redundant. So anything that's redundant, we're going to get rid of it, but we're going to add these half equations together. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to take, I'll just rewrite it. Uh, actually, I'm going to copy it and then rewrite it. So we're going to take this. I'm going to paste it down here. And we're going to take this. Trying to line the arrows up so you can see that there's a left side and a right side. Right, so everything on this side, we're going to add together. And everything on this side, we're going to add together. Following? Anybody not seeing that? So on the left, both half reactions are going to get combined. So let's write it out. That's going to be <clears throat> uh, 14H plus. I know this is very, very tedious, but so this is going to test your attention span and your attention to detail, these types of uh, reactions, for sure. Plus CR2O7 minus 2 plus 6FE2 plus, let me fix that plus sign, plus 6 electrons. All right. That's the first, that's the left half. And then that's going to give me. Run out of space. Hold up. Let me shrink that just a tad. All right. That's going to give me. Two CR three plus plus six FE two plus plus seven H two O plus six electrons. Yes or no? Are we combining everything on the right with everything on the left now? Because we, we're trying to write this final balanced redox equation for chromium uh, dichromate plus iron two plus going to chromium three plus plus iron three plus All right and if you notice the electrons are, are balanced and they're the same so we can actually get rid of them that's what i mean by combining uh, combine and then cancel common items sometimes that common item might be water it might be uh protons on both sides it just depends <coughs> All right, so now let's write out. So this is the final balanced redox equation. Right, is gonna be 14H plus plus CR207 minus two plus six FE two plus. And that's gonna give me Without the electrons now, they, those are gone now. Two CR three plus plus six FE two plus plus seven H two O. So that's the that's the final balanced equation. I have a question. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, so if if we're canceling the um six electrons since they're the same on both sides why don't we cancel the six fe2 plus oh good question that's because i screwed up <laughs> this is fe3 plus so it's, it's something totally different it's a totally different uh ion my bad okay thank you yeah 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 if now if that was the case 
if you had the same ion on both sides, then absolutely you would cancel it. If it's if you had the same ion and it's balanced with the same coefficient, absolutely you would do that. But that was my fault. The on the right side of the arrow is Fe3 plus, left side is Fe2 plus. Excellent. Great observation. Thank you for catching that. Because you know, I, this is going on YouTube. I don't need to be embarrassed. Uh thinking with people thinking I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> so thank you for catching that. Um so here's the here's the question. What what got oxidized and what got reduced? Because in a redox equation or redox reaction, something has to get reduced and something has to get oxidized. So what got oxidized? Was it the dichrome? Was it chromium or was it iron that got oxidized? And what is, so let me ask this question. What does oxidized mean? If we can, if you define it, then you'll know which one got oxidized. When we say something is oxidized, what, what do we mean? We got two, it, two ways to define that. Go ahead. Gains electrons, right? It's the opposite. It's the opposite. Ah. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> I knew it was one of the two. Yes. It, it's either going to gain or lose, right? So if it got oxidized, that means it lost electrons. So which one of these lost electrons? All we got to do is go up here and see which side the electrons are on. If the electron, whatever species has electrons on the right, whatever half reaction has electrons on the right side, that's what got oxidized. So when you look up here at these half reactions, you can see that it's the iron With, with, with electrons on the right side of the arrow. So iron got oxidized, all right? Is, are y'all catching that? I'm, I'm a little lost. I thought it would have been chromium because it went from having like none on the left to having like a three plus on the right side. Right, right, right. But the oxidation number of chromium when we checked it up here was six for one chromium. So it went from one chromium, went from plus six to plus three. Are you following that? Because when we- I think I'm following, yeah. I think I got you. This is CR2, right? So there are two chromium yeah. atoms in there. So, okay, yeah, I'm following, I got you. So if they both have an ox oxidation number of plus six, that means that if you got two of them, it's gonna be plus 12. And then on the other side, you had two that were plus three. So when you add those up, that's plus six. So chromium actually gained six electrons. That's why we put the electrons on this side. So chromium got reduced and then by the same token, iron got oxidized, right? So iron got oxidized. Come on, Russell, don't put this out there for everybody to see now, you can't spell. And then chromium got reduced. Normally, if you figure out one, the other one is by default. So iron gets oxidized, chromium gets reduced. All right, so chromium added electrons to it. It, it was added in electrons, iron gave up electrons. So this is the, and this is a weird relationship, but this, if it gives up electrons, it's the reducing agent or the reductant. If it gains electrons, it's the oxidizing agent because it is what helps whatever the other atom is or the ion, it helps it get oxidized by taking this electron. Right? So that's that's the that's the relationship between oxidation and reduction is that the species that gets oxidized uses those electrons are used to reduce the other species. And the species that gets reduced, those electrons are coming from the species that got oxidized. Right, so it's kind of a symbiotic relationship between the oxidant, oxidizing agent, and the reducing agent. All right. 
So we're going to stop here. It's 150, and I have another example, but I don't want to do it because it's going it'll take up like too much time because it's in basic solution. So I'm going to finish up this video and send it to reinforce what we talked about today. And then um, on tomorrow, we're going to do a review because we're still going to take the test Friday, but we're going to have class Friday too. So we'll, in class tomorrow, between tomorrow and Friday, we're going to review the topics that we've covered so far. And we're going to start stoichiometry. Stoichiometry is not difficult. Everything that we're going to talk about with stoichiometry, stoichiometry, we've already talked about it. We know how to go from grams to moles. We know how to go from molarity to moles. We know how to convert uh, moles into grams. We know how to convert moles into particles, all of that. And we know how to balance equations. So we know how to figure out how much of X is present or how much of Y based on the coefficients. So if we know that, we can make all of that work for us. And that's what we're going to do on, um, on tomorrow, between tomorrow and Friday. So the stoichiometry part is all about figuring out relationships. What, what is one thing in relation to another based on those coefficients that we use for balancing? So everything that we learn up to this point has an application. And we're going to do that between tomorrow and Friday. And we'll take a test on Friday. And it'll be the same format. All right, less calculations though. The last test had a lot of calculations on it. This test won't have as many. This is more, this is different. With balancing and uh, predicting precipitation reactions and all that stuff, that's all different. So we'll ha I'll have a little, uh, we're gonna have a short review leading us right up to redox. And then after we do another redox problem tomorrow, we'll start on stoichiometry between tomorrow and Friday. All right, everybody good? Yes, yes, sir. I must say, I enjoy this class almost more than my uh, organic class. I'm thinking about dropping organic and just teaching GQ. We'll see about it. But I do. I, I, this is a, a, a joy to, to teach this class.